Morning everybody, it's Bennett Prescott here and I am gonna go into Harbor Freight Tools right now uh, because they've got a crazy good deal on a three kilowatt inverter generator which uh, says it's very quiet and they're comparing it pretty closely to the Honda inverter generator which I think everybody knows is pretty good. So what I wanna find out is when they say on their spec sheet a certain decibel level, what does that really mean in the real world compared to another generator? And uh, so we're gonna take some measurements against the Honda, which I'm gonna rent from Home Depot and find out just how good this generator is. Hopefully we're gonna load it down too, see how it is under load. And uh, hopefully that'll be valuable to some people. And I wanna use this as, a, as an analogy to talk about loudspeakers because loudspeakers also have single number spec sheets like this one where it's just a bunch of single numbers and uh, they look pretty good they all look pretty much the same so how do you think about ways to, to figure out what those numbers really mean to you and if one product is better than another what it means sort of behind the scenes uh, in terms of frequency spectrum and uh, perceived loudness so that'll be pretty good so I'm gonna get one of these got a good deal on it it's for $7.99 but uh, I got a coupon, saves me 30 bucks. So we're gonna get in the car and go. Let's take a quick look at Harbor Freight's own comparison of their Predator generator to the Honda. There's a couple major differences I wanna talk about. First of all, it's considerably lighter. That has to come from somewhere. You figure they're probably not using carbon fiber to reduce weight, so it may be less durable. Also, it's got a smaller fuel tank, which could mean it's got a shorter run time, and it's got a slightly larger engine size, which could also mean that it has a shorter run time. Notably missing from this cell sheet is anything to do with fuel consumption or noise. The second page of the Predator manual has both specifications, but they're completely missing from the Honda manual. I had to do a little digging. I went to their website and found this graph of all of their generators. At the very bottom, in almost unreadably small type, it tells you that they measured at 7 meters, or 23 feet, and 25% of rated output producing 50 dB of noise. These are the same measurement conditions given in the Predator Generator's manual, so we ought to be able to compare them directly. Let's see if that holds up in our tests. So I'm driving to southeastern Connecticut, to Franklin, to meet up with Silas Bredetto of Contents Unlimited, who's lending us his shop space to take our measurements. Uh, and he also has a load bank that he's gonna lend us. And I'm gonna meet up there also with Chris Tanjures of Rational Acoustics, who's got uh, a matched quad of measurement mics. Our plan, my hope, is to lay out four mics evenly spaced around each generator, fire them up and take uh, SPL and frequency spectrum measurements loaded, unloaded, uh, and then in eco throttle mode, loaded and unloaded. So we can see whether both generators can provide the same output, which they probably can, uh, and how noisy they are while they do it, which I'm hoping is gonna be the interesting part. Otherwise, it'll be uh, a beautiful fall day in New England to sit around uh, wasting our time eating donuts and taking measurements. Could be worse. So here's our setup. Chris is putting out uh, four different measuring microphones. We're gonna put them around each generator. So we've got one, two, three, four mics around each generator, and we can measure all four sides of it. And then we're gonna switch on this load bank, which is very, uh, high tech bucket of water with some water heater elements in it and as we switch on each element the generator will uh will make different levels of noise i, I assume i don't know so uh we've got the four microphones set up uh each one's a different color so actually the closest one to us is this blue which makes sense kind of why it's louder than the next one closest is green and then the two uh, on the far side are the red and purple uh, here, I just made a, a little grid showing each one uh, A-weighted slow, uh, just so we can see at a glance the, the level. And, and again, that's counterclockwise to how they're actually positioned. Uh, once we start logging, I've actually configured um, octave banded uh, SPL uh, frequency so that we will be able to, after the fact, look at each octave band and see you know, how they change uh, through the various tests. All right, we got a good background noise measurement, so we're gonna fire this thing up and get our generator measurements. And should see some volts. 125 dead on, waveform's perfect. Like, I've never seen a waveform that good. So this thing's pretty quiet with the grip throttle on. If we turn it off, 
that's about what you'd expect from normal use. So now we're gonna apply some load with this load bank and uh, see how much the SPL changes and also see how much the waveform changes, which, which could be interesting. Two kilowatt uh, uh, heating element inside this bucket of water, but uh, we're only running at 120 volts, so it's, it's more like 500 watts. So we'll see what the meter says when I hit this switch. Going from uh, zero amps to, let's see, 4.2 at 124 volts. So we've got all three switches on on this load bank. We're doing uh, about 18 amps and uh, just heating up that water in there. It's not getting really hot, but it's getting warm and putting a little bit of load into it for a little while. And we're gonna try one more. Got this last element here. See if we can get it to uh, actually shut off. But I don't think so, because the generator is rated for uh, 33 kilowatts continuous, and we're at uh, 2200 VA, which it should be pretty much a, a, a one to one power factor. So uh, we'll see what happens if we plug that in. That's 2700 watts ish. I think that's about as good as we're going to be able to do. It says it shuts off around 23, so I think we're, we're getting almost there, but that's all the load we got. So we'll, we'll move on to the next generator. So we're going to do the Honda next, which I rented from Home Depot. Uh, the, it has an electric starter, which is kind of a nice feature, but it, it doesn't work, so I got to start it manually. That's cold, so I better pull up a joke. Honda's holding a few volts higher, 126 versus like 123, 124 volts for the, the Predator. And as a result, the, uh, the current that it pulls and therefore the power it delivers is just a tiny bit higher, a tenth of an amp higher. So now we've got something interesting because we've got the, uh, the, the Predator versus the Honda uh, unloaded with Eco Throttle off. And you can see uh, that there there is a, a meaningful difference to talk about. and. Uh, which is kind of surprising because the Predator is physically bigger and it's got a lot of plastic panels. You'd think it could be pretty well damped. Eighteen point five. The coup de grace. What I'm trying to get at here by talking about generators and not loudspeakers is A, to sort of eliminate the loudspeaker bias, because we all have strong opinions about loudspeakers and, and manufacturers, but probably a less strong opinion about generators. By showing you that two generators can have a very similar specification sheet and yet be quite different, uh, I want you to kind of think, and the next time you see two spec sheets and they look very similar, ask yourself, uh, is that by design? Uh, and did these two numbers come to me through the same process. So one of the other things to consider, which we've noticed while I've been moving these around, is that this Predator is all plastic and it's probably part of what makes it uh, so lightweight. I mean, I can pick this Predator up and carry it on and off the car and up and down my basement stairs. But the, uh, the Honda is not a one person lift. It's all metal, uh, except for this part. You can see that the, the frame, the chassis underneath it is pretty heavy metal as well. That Honda is definitely built for getting banged around a little bit. Now that we've taken all those measurements, let's see what we can see in the data. This blue line here represents 50 decibels, which is the Honda's rating, one quarter load at 23 feet. I'm also gonna include this background noise measurement, which is all four microphones averaged with no generators running, so we can make sure that we have enough signal to noise for a believable measurement. Now let's look at the generators. Here's the Honda in pink and the Predator in orange, both unloaded with EcoThrottle off. Both generators have a pretty similar noise profile up until about one kilohertz, and then they begin to diverge. The Predator is about nine dB louder in our measurement, especially from two kilohertz to eight kilohertz, and nine dB is a lot. If you turn up your car stereo kind of one click, the smallest amount you can hear is about three dB. Whereas if you turn it up and you go, ah, it's twice as loud, and you measure the difference, it's gonna be about 10 dB. So the, the Predator being 9 dB louder means it's gonna sound almost twice as loud here in the peak of the human ear's sensitivity range. 
The ear is relatively insensitive to low frequencies, but it's very sensitive to exactly the same frequencies where the Predator is the loudest. The Honda doesn't really have that same noise problem. It's got a nice gradual roll off, so it's gonna be a lot less annoying to stand next to and you're not gonna feel like you need to walk away from it to have a conversation. This kind of frequency specific insight is lost by the time the data makes it to the data sheet because the data sheet just lists a single number, 50 dB or 57 dB, whatever. And they do that by averaging together all of these data points to give an average of the SPL or noise across the entire audible spectrum. To try and make these sort of single number noise specifications better match human perception, they're almost always presented as A-weighted. A-weighting is by far the most common of a series of weighting filters that dates back to the beginning of audio measurement. If I apply an A-weighting filter to our blue 50 decibel line here, you can see the shape of it. It rolls off the low frequencies considerably and actually applies a slight prominence here around two to four kilohertz. If I apply that A weighting filter to all of our data, you can see what's gonna go into the average that forms the single number noise specification for each generator. And you can see how those specifications could be quite similar because the two generators have a very similar level, even after the filter up uh, over most of the area where they're loudest. All this information that we've been talking about is rolled off enough that it's not gonna contribute heavily to that specification. Funny thing is the two specification sheets aren't actually the same. The Honda is rated at 50 dB quarter load and the Predator is rated at 57 dB quarter load. And that's not really borne out in the data. When we take our A weighted measurements between the two, uh, they're less than a decibel apart. So I think Predator may have written the wrong number down on their specification sheet after doing their measurements. With generators, as with loudspeakers, in the end, you have to get that thing out and listen to it yourself and kick it around a little bit and see what you think. What we learned coming out of all this testing is something that we kind of already knew going in, which is that the Predator probably does the job, uh, but it's uh, a cheaper piece of equipment. Even in something as simple as uh, power equipment, you just can't reliably compare specification sheets between manufacturers, even if the numbers appear quite the same. Thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed putting this one together. It was fun to test some equipment and make a little bit of noise and get some things to overload. Uh, I don't do that as often as I would like to. I'm gonna put uh, two links here. One is for a video of just the generators running uh, one after the other so that you can hear their noise profile. And another one is a link to me trying to start the Predator for the umpteenth time. Have a lovely rest of your day. So as long as we're here, uh, Silas has got two more generators. He's got this uh, little Honda E3000, and I thought that might be kind of interesting to, to measure as well. And he's got uh, one of the seven kilowatt ones as well. It does 240 volts. <laughs> this panel is buzzing. Just sit here so we can get our visuals. So with Eco Throttle on, I was curious how much load we could put on the thing. It's pretty good, 4.2 amps. Maybe a little more. Still, I think that's about the limit of eco throttle. Let's see. Yeah, I had to throttle all the way up, so it won't do. Uh, it won't do eight amps, that's for sure. But that's pretty good. So I got my foot on this thing to dampen this noisy side panel. But we got it loaded down to 13.6 uh, amps. That's pretty good. That's, uh, that's a little more than it should probably be able to do. So, ready for the last one? This should turn it off. Seventeen three. How is it still running? I don't know. It's definitely lost some volts. Nineteen point. Uh, there we go. That finally killed it. <laughs> it went down to one hundred seven volts. <laughs> so Silas also has this EU uh, seven thousand IS, which is a two hundred forty volt generator, which is great because we can put a little more load on it. Eco off. No load yet. There's 8.7. That's getting pretty good.
good. This 20 amps, 20.5 at 240. So we were trying to get this thing to shut off, but uh, that's 32.4 amps or so. The whole load bank on. That's gotta be making some heat inside there. I mean, we can, and we can plug in our last, uh, and now it's got electrical water all over it. Now it's his overload at 36 amps, and it shut off. We finally got it. What a good generator. Good boy. It's not too squatted, right? <laughs> you know me, fam. I'm all about that stance life. 